your inner being channel. Well, here I have for you, I have uh, some tools that I have for, uh, for my mindfulness. When I do classes, I do uh, mindfulness and I bring my tools that I use for, often it's more of a, a sound therapy, some, some sound healing, you might say. But these tools that I have uh, work in different ways. Some are at a basic level of understanding and in other ways, it can be a little bit more complicated in the nature of how it works and why we use them. So I have with me as well, I have some drums that I bring. These are handmade drums. I have a gong over there. And I could end up using a number of other various uh, sounds for, for this purpose. And the drums... When I made them, they were handmade, like I said, and just making them was a mindfulness journey. And so they're very, very uh, special to me. And same with these bowls. I have here some that are handmade and some that are machine made. And there's uh, nothing negative about any of the things to say about even the machine ones. However, why we use them? Well, for, for as long as we know, we've been using sound for all kinds of ways that are therapeutic. Whether you're singing in your car or just hearing some beautiful music, even that hard rock and roll and heavy metal stuff. Anything that, that drives with your vibration is doing so for whatever reason. And so we have to respect that. And what we can do to enhance our experience in life is to play around and use sound or vibrations as a tool. So everything is vibrating. You're vibrating, the table's vibrating, everything's vibrating, and between you and I, there's nothing but vibration at its core. Everything that in the universe is made up of are small, coded waves of information. And those ways of information is the building blocks of everything that we know. And so at the core of everything is vibration. Everything is vibrating. At a tune, it dances, it's, uh, it's beautiful, it's chaotic, but this is our reality. Our minds, our thinking thought patterns, these are all vibrations as well. Even that is a vibration. So those vibrations that are in our mind are projections on our moods and our feelings and our emotions and how we think and react to things are all based on how we feel and how we see the world. And so sometimes when the world is getting a little chaotic or our bodies are a little bit out of whack, that could be the energy flow within your life, within around you and within you that we could we can correct the balance of that or, 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 bring, or bring some balance to, to the force, you might say. And so by doing so, we can play these instruments in a way that, uh, that can help change our moods or enhance our thoughts. So I'll talk a little bit more about the sound therapy in a moment, but let me introduce you to the singing bowls or medicine bowls. So they are called medicine bowls. These have been around for thousands of years, and they've been called medicine bowls for that very healing nature that they have. They act in two ways. One is a bell, and the other is a singing. So they sing. Now, like I said, there's two different forms here. There's handmade and machine made. So the handmade ones are ones like this, where they start off as a flat disc and they put it into a fire, into the coals of the fire and heat it up. And then when they pull it out, someone's holding them in the metal vice grips and they're holding them there while 
spinning it around as one or two or even three people are hammering it and hammering it and hammering it and then eventually by the repeated process of that they start to form this bolt. Now as you can see here there's a lot of divots in it and that is the markings of the hammers and in some of the bowls that you get like this one over here you'll see that even the blackness the, the coals have been etched in there I can't clean that off it's, it's just etched in there that blackness from the coals is in there and so you can really get a good sense of which one is an authentically handmade one in some regions as they hammer with each hammer that they do they may say a mantra or in other words a prayer that goes in with each hammering to enhance its mystiqueness you see it's in enhance it's uh, it's uh, it's it's vibration in, in itself and so some bowls work better than others when it comes to how they resonate and i find that some of these machine ones resonate very well this one here when i play i just played it plays very well it's easy to use now when i have two bowls like this exactly the same width and and and, and size they may not sound exactly the same they're still always going to be unique whereas one of these hand uh, machine made ones two roughly the same size like this identical ones will be very much close to the same sounding you may not even know the difference this little guy here i always like to show is because this one is uh the most common one that everyone buys simply because it's the least expensive one and when you don't know which ones to get you don't want to spend too much money on them because they can be quite expensive so everyone gets one of these the problem is with this particular one these small ones they're actually harder to play and they produce a certain resonance that it's pretty high pitch So you see, if I use this as a tool, I can only play this for a few seconds at a time because that sound is irritating and you, you can go insane, I, I like to joke. Whereas the one over here, I could play literally for an hour. I can, I can sit here and play this for a long time. And I often have this one going on in the background as I'm teaching my class, I'm doing a meditation of some kind. I might be guiding meditation. And I'll have this one going as I speak. And I can play two at a time. Some of these nowadays, you get them in like this. They're more, they're very decorative. And some people just use them for decorations in their home, which is a bit, bit sad, but don't let the size fool you. The fact that this is a bigger and thicker bowl does not mean that it's going to be a bigger and thicker sound, heavier sound. It's still kind of light, whereas this smaller one is far more heavier and grounding. The other thing I don't really care for about these ones here is the paint on them. They kind of get it rub off there, but it's still okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it at all. But you, there's a bit of a scratchiness until you, you wore it in for a little bit. Now you'll notice that they are all sitting on these little donuts. You can hand make these. You can buy these online or from wherever, but they can be a little expensive. But all this is is some styrofoam and you wrap it around with some leather and basically it just enhances the vibration a little bit so it resonates the sound a little bit more somewhat like you would have a, a, in a speaker for your stereo system so depending on the size 
you can use them for playing uh, in getting in tune with say your chakras for example so if you're a person who understands chakras then you're going to want to understand the different dynamics of each of these tones so again getting back to this one this one here would be more of a grounding tone it's grounding this one here is very much at a higher vibration so depending on how you play with these you can then you can then get in tune with other people's chakras which then also help them with their understanding of their whole world and also helps them with their emotional states so anybody who's stressed out or feeling anxiety these are the tools that you can use and often believe it or not quite often when I have a mindfulness class we often get people who do have tears in their eyes for both um, uh, reasons that are affecting them negatively or, or uh, emotions that they were exploring were negative and that's coming out or just the sheer beauty of it all of their experience can affect uh, tears in their eyes as well so that experience is very very emotional and so that is another reason why it's, it's good to to use the sound therapy some of these bowls you can get quite big and people would stand in them and they would ring it and then you can feel the vibrations throughout your whole body for example if i were to hold this in my hand as i play i can feel it going through my entire arm and my chest area and if you were actually here with me or perhaps you're feeling this through your speaker system or, or your headphones you can feel that vibration this is what's happening to me right now I can focus on just this feeling, which is also another meditation on its own, just focusing on the sound. Now, when I pull out the drums, they have a different effect. The beating of the sound, it's the constant beating of the sound, is no longer calming, but that resonance and the, the, the constant tone will affect you in a different way it might bring you into a deeper focus of whatever it is that you're thinking of it becomes a stronger connection so that vibration that you're that emotion that you're having can be enhanced greatly just by the beating of the drum and if you're a spiritual person this is where it can really take you into all kinds of weird places in your mind it can take you on a journey an exploration to a far off universe or dimension uh, you can just enhance the communication between you and the universe and that's another purpose and why we use it is to not only project or enhance our own thoughts but it also can be the reverse and where you project and enhance the information coming to you so if you wanted to receive information this is where that can happen so you can receive information on the universe and whatever it is is trying to tell you so if you learn to use these tools and you learn to feel the vibration and feel that connection and feel your emotions whether it's a placebo effect or not i'm not here to judge or explain any of the science or tell you that it is a mystical thing that's happening to you but your experience is your experience and it all comes down to the vibration and the relationship between you and your mind and your emotional state that you're in. So, with that said, there is a healing aspect to it and that plays with, again with the mind and the body because your mind is, your, sorry, your brain is always talking to your body and your body is always telling your brain what it needs and they work together. Once you've learned to understand how your body is communicating with you, you can then have a thought. That thought can be enhanced and your brain and your body can interact with that thought. So if you're hoping to heal yourself, just by thinking about healing yourself, you can produce what some people might think is a miracle. Uh, these things have happened. Uh, the sciences out there are, haven't quite caught up to explaining why these things are happening. But even a placebo effect, and what I mean by placebo is, is the fact that nothing may be really happening except for your mind. Your, your mind tends to fool itself into believing a certain thing. That's what the placebo thing is. 
So even if it's your mind fooling yourself into certain things, you're either being healthy or you're not. You're either gaining health or you're not. The, for whatever reason, if you believe that you've healed yourself, you're going to act in a certain way and your emotional state is going to bring you into a certain way in which that's where you make your decisions and your decisions are highly based on your emotions. So it could all be a good thing. In the end, that's all I'm saying is that it could be a very good thing. So it becomes complicated, like I said. We can use these tools on a basic level or we can use them for an intense, uh, deep realization, uh, deep vibration within ourselves to understand and communicate with all things and change the way we interact with our world. So, it's a beautiful instrument and I highly encourage you to get one. If you were to get one though, I would suggest playing it first. Use the one that feels right for you. Don't just play with any one and take it home with you. Some don't feel, they don't jive with you. So don't take the one that jives with you. Take the one that does jive with you and don't go necessarily for the price. If you can afford the one that jives with you, then get it. But they can be a little bit expensive. In some cases though, you could take, get a second one that jives with the one that doesn't jive. So for example, these two play very well with each other. So what if somebody gives you one as a gift? What if you purchase one online? What does that mean? Well, some people might think that the one that you're receiving is the one that you were meant to have. So even if you get one that doesn't jive with you, that was, that's your experience. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to deal with the one that, that you received? Are you just not going to play with it? Is it going to be a, a weird vibration in your home that makes you feel uneasy? Are you going to give it back? Are you going to exchange it? What are you going to do? Can you give it to somebody else who, jive, who it jives with? That's another solution for that as well. So that is your experience. So I would say, if you can, play the bowl and see how it feels. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's a, it's a quick run through of what these are. And uh, I hope you learned something about them today. And I hope that you don't get uh, discouraged by getting a small one that doesn't play very well or it's hard to play because that's just the nature of the small ones. So try to move in towards a little bit of a bigger one. I would, if I were to purchase one of them, I would get something that's a low tone because not only is that a low tone, the vibration is very strong and I can feel it throughout my whole body. That's the one I would go for. So it's a wonderful thing and I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this uh, talk today. So until next time, take care and I wish you well. Thank you for watching.